Welcome to Forest Using and Protection. It is in the eighth lesson, the fifth chapter. Now let us see what are forests and what are the uses of forests. Forest means many things to different people. Some people are afraid of forest, thinking that it is a house of wild animals, snakes, insects, and dangerous place. And for some others, forest is a place where we find temples and some people walk in the forest without any fear. To some people, forest is a place where they get raw materials like timber, bamboo, beady leaves, etc. Now, even in our previous classes, you read about the tribal people who are living in the forest and in our Puranas also, we have stories relating to the forest. Now, in this lesson, we are going to learn the definition of forest, the location and the different types of forest and the forest in our Telangana state and the, what are the acts that are brought to protect the tribal people. Now, exactly what is the definition of forest? So first they defined as a forest, as a large tract of land covered by trees. Then there were many limitations here. Now when a large tract which is covered by tree, now can we call a plantation? Now if we are growing a plantation where we are having tea and coffee plants, can we call it as uh, forest? So some limitations were there. And at last it determined that a forest should have being four features, then only we can call it as forest. And the first feature is it is it should be a large tract of land and it should stretch for several kilometers in length and breadth. So the first one is it should be in a very a large area. It should cover a very large area. And the second one, it is here we should find different types of trees, plants, climbers, and these trees or plants should grow naturally with little interference of man. And the third one is here we should find biodiversity, where we should we will find many kinds of plants and animals. They are living and breeding naturally without any interference. And the fourth one is in India, uh, the most of the forests were inhabited by the people who were living in them and were adopting themselves to the condition of the people. So in India, we find tribal people. So this point also was included. Now, if any land which is satisfying these four features, then we can call it as forest. Now, our, what is the definition of forest means? You can tell the four points. The first one is it should be a large tract of land. The second, we should find different kinds of trees, plants, creepers. And the third one is there should be biodiversity. And the fourth one is it should be inhabited by people who protect and adopt the forest. Now, let us see where the forests are located. Thousands of years, you find forests everywhere where there was water and Soil. Slowly, as people started cultivating, uh, growing agriculture, they started cutting the forest and they started using the land for growing crops. And slowly, villages and towns came and they started cutting down the forest. And the area which was under the forest has been reduced. Now, where the forests are means now forests are confirmed to only the tracks that are not useful for agriculture are the regions that are hilly, swamp and rocky, are which were too cold or far away from population centers and these places now we can find forest. Again in forest, we are having four types of forest. We are having evergreen forest, deciduous forest, thorny forest, litorous forest. And these four forests we find in different parts of the world and they depend upon, uh, according to the climatic conditions, we find this forest. And the plants grown here also 
are changing from one forest to another forest so let us see the first forest evergreen forest we find evergreen forest in equatorial region and here the climate is it is very hot and it receives uh, heavy rainfall and you can find in uh, africa and in india you can see in kerala andaman and himalayas so these are the places where temperature is hot and they are receiving heavy rainfall and we find here certain types of plants called like cane bamboo spadams and in himalayas we are having a pine forest so the leaves here generally in equatorial forest the leaves are very broad and very tall so the leaves will not shed the the trees will not shed the leaves at a time so whenever you see the forest is very green so here the forest is very dense and always green and the next type of forest is deciduous forest again we are having here two types in deciduous forest one is receiving less for rain and another one is receiving more rainfall and these two types of forest we are finding in telangana uh, and the place which is receiving less rainfall there we find neem vegi billu trees and we can see in telangana in adilabad district warangal kammam nizamabad and deciduous forest where it is getting more rainfall there we find in telangana in komaram bheem district and nagar kannur jay shankar and badradri and the trees we find here are vegi maddi and uh, teak and here the leaves will shed the trees will shed shut down the leaves and the next third forest is thorny forest these types of forest we will find in places where it is very hot and the rainfall is very very less so in generally near uh, dry areas we will find this thorny forest nearly near deserts or uh, the places where it is very hot and this type of forest we also find in telangana so here the temp how is the climatic condition means it is very high temperature and less rainfall and the trees we find here are babula sitafal regi neem and this thorny trees they have tiny leaves and the thorns they can conserve water and in telangana in nalgonda district mahbub nagar and in some parts of medak district we can find this thorny forest the next one is the litorous forest and this forest usually we find near the sea coast and we can also call them as swamp forest and we find them near the sandy beaches and the marshy lands and here the trees will grow in the water and they are adopting the salt water and the tidal waves and this we find here mangrove forest so in india we are having you know india is a peninsula and we are having a uh, sea coast along a sea coast and there we find this mangrove forest and here you find uppa doddu ponna and uh, other trees now here let us see the status of forest in telangana like if you see total area of forest we are having 26904 square kilometer forest is there in telangana and if you 24% are one fourth of the state area it comes under forest but at present we are having only 16% 16.74% area covered under forest and we lost 7% because of using the forest cutting down the forest or because of deforestation and the land 7% it was not having all the factors which it should have to be called as forest there the plants were reduced so we cannot call it and slowly we lost 7% area Uh, and if you take it 
in every year 30 square kilometers of forest we are losing every year so taking the looking at the uh, situation the telangana government it has initiated a massive plantation program in 2015 and with the aim uh, to increase the forest coverage and it is planning to plant uh, 230 crores sapling in 4 years and as a part of this sapling program the saplings have are being planted near the open space which is inhabited of people are on the both sides of the road or tank ban are in public places like schools colleges etc so it is trying to improve the area of forest Now here in this map also you can see where forests are. Now, as I told you in our Indian context, the tribal people live in forests, and you know from even early ages also we find tribal people living in the forest, and they used to depend upon the forest for their livelihood and even also for their food. so we find tribal people they are going into the forest and they are collecting honey uh, fruits flowers roots and they are also hunting small animals and they have lot of respect to the forest and they also do podo cultivation and you know about podo cultivation children according to podo cultivation they cut some part of the forest they clear it and they cultivate it to Two to four years, and afterwards they leave that area again. They go and they select another place for cultivating. So in this way, they are generating the tree and animals also, and they have the custodial right on the forest land. So these tribal people they help to generate to regenerate the animals and trees. they look after the forest as the same way as a farmer he take care of his field but when the british rule came there was lot of changes that took place in the forest also and you know that the britishers have ruled us nearly for 200 years and they want wood so they went to the forest and they cut down the wood and they want this wood to build the railway tracks for the sleeper coaches the ships the mines and the furniture so they cut down the forest and this with the with that wood they constructed the railways and all so slowly what did they do they asked the tribal people to go away to leave the forest and to go away so in this in this contest in the year 1876 slowly they brought a law telling that some forest has to be protected and the forest was divided into two it is like protected forest and reserved forest and according to the reserved forest and nobody can enter into this forest and protected forest even the tribal people can enter and collect the product and they can sell or they can graze their cattle So in this way, the Britishers they brought lot of restrictions, and afterwards the Nizams also was uh, they brought lot of restrictions, and the tribal people became homeless. And you find afterwards forest uh, department uh, forest officers coming, and they were controlling the forest, and the Britishers slowly they gave away the land to Zamindars, the forest land to Zamindars, and the Zamindars were. paying high revenue to the britishers and this tribal people they lost the control over the forest and they were working in the fields once upon a time which belonged to them here the tribal people they are not having ownership of a land because they are shifting from one place to another place so they did not had a particular place telling that this land belong to us so they thought that the whole forest belongs to them and if any member was added into the family the committee would increase the land in that way the whole forest land belong to the tribal people only so lot of changes 
took place and after independence many people uh, they realized that without the tribal people they cannot develop the forest or they cannot take care of the forest so to implement it they brought some changes and they gave some rights to the tribal people so in the year 1988 the national forest policy was brought and here uh, they undertook the production of the forest was impossible without the active role of tribal so a national forest policy in 1988 was declaring that the primary task should be to associate the tribal people with the production regeneration and development of the forest so they gave lot of importance to the tribal people they asked them to come and to live in the forest and they asked them to take care of the forest and along with the tribal people the government also it involved the villagers and it asked them to form a village community living and both tribal people and this village community together they will protect the forest and the forest development and local communities are expected to collaborate in regenerating degraded forest planting trees in this way many new policies were brought we can find the village level community and even also the telangana government it was renamed the program and it has formed a committee called as community forest management csm program and according to it also it involved the villages and it protected the forest and in the year 2003 forest right act was brought and according to it it, it gave three important rights to the tribal people first one it ensured the food security so whatever was growing in the forest the tribal people had the right to go and collect the food the honey or any products and they can use it and the second one is the land in the forest it will belong to the tribal people only and that right has to be passed between them only from one generation to another generation among the tribal community only no other private person or anyone can go and purchase the land or he can own the land and the third point is when if the government is building a dam for the welfare of the nation at that time they can build the dam but they have to relocation has to be done properly the tribal people has to be given another place and it has to be done so in this way certain rights were given to them and we are uh, and they are we find the tribal people taking care of the forest okay children thank you